Praise the Lord. Are you in the house? Praise the Lord. I believe we can do better than that all across the world. But those of you who are worried, you are the most special of all the special people we are addressing today. So those of you who are worried, show them out there that you are really special. Praise the Lord. It's such an awesome privilege to be standing here at the seventh edition of Ignite. Wow. We've done seven editions already and the fire is spreading all around the world. Thank God for all the wonderful messages that we have heard this morning. And I believe that you're already igniting or getting ignited so that you can carry the fire to where you are and set the whole nation ablaze for God and for yourself also. And I believe we'll do that in Jesus' name. Now, within the um, ambit of time that I have, I want to quickly look at the scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. The Bible says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, he, for he has no one to help him. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But now, how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cold is not quickly broken. I stand to declare for us, especially those of us who are here, who are in the ignite, that the cord that holds us together will not be easily destroyed. Can we say a word of prayer? Father, we thank you this morning. We give glory and praise to your name. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that we have to gather together in several cities and in several places so that you can impact our life and move us on to the next, next level. You have called us to own the future. Lord, we will not disappoint destiny. We will not disappoint you and we will not disappoint ourselves in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Once again, I say it's an awesome privilege for us to be called to be here at a time like this. And I want to thank God and appreciate everyone who is here. I also want to appreciate our fathers for the opportunity to share the platform with them. We just had one of our fathers, Pastor Peter Amekena, all the way from Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, speaking to us. And you can imagine how loaded that was. There is a lot of stuff readily established in this place for us. Honestly speaking, somebody was talking here and he said that if you are born poor, it's not your fault. But if you remain and die poor, then definitely it will be your fault. Can I add to that? That if after this conference, you don't shine for God and shine for yourself, it will be your fault. So please help me tell your neighbor, I will shine for God. And please, I'd like to add this to it. Tell him, I will shine for myself. And then I will shine for my generation. So I, I celebrate our fathers. I celebrate the organizers of this. this is a, let's put our hands together. Later on, we'll be hearing Pastor Demi, Pastor Deshola, they'll be coming on board and, and, and others. Um, my name is B.C. Akonde. I am a pastor, I'm a certified leadership coach, I'm a speaker, I'm a trainer, and I'm an author by the grace of God. I'm born from a very, very, I, 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 I'm born from a very, very humble background. In fact, I say to people jokingly that the, the, the bedroom where I lived, where I lived to go to secondary school, the bedroom from where I went to school is not as big as my bathroom today, whether you believe it or not, but that's the truth of the matter. I, I, I was a very, very humbled person as it were. I was humbled already, so I didn't really need to humble myself too much. You know, I was humbled already. And uh, so, so because of that kind of humble nature, I became a shy person. I couldn't stand before people. I couldn't even speak in front of my friend. You know, people talk about having girlfriends. Who, who born me? I couldn't even talk to a girl. I didn't have the, the, and coupled with that, unfortunately for me, I happened to have been born in a place where they felt that they were going to steal me away, so they had to give me some some tribal marks just to identify me you understand what i'm talking about so all that put together became a problem for me because i couldn't face people you know now why did i say i'm a pastor i'm a coach i couldn't even talk to nobody so how come a man who was born shy like that or who became shy over time how come he can now stand in front of people because over the years i've spoken to large crowds all over the world what happened how what what created the shift that we're talking about what what happened how did it come to pass it happened because one day i joined a network of 
of churches that has spread all over the world. One day, I met a number of people. That's the power of networking because that's what I'm asked to speak about. I'm asked to talk about networking. The truth is that every man's net worth is determined by his network because in this life, people matter. I just read the scripture. It said two are better than one because they have a reward for their labor. In this life, you will labor, but it's not everyone that labors that has a reward for their labor. Some people labor and they don't get a reward for their labor. But you know what the scripture says? Two are better. So networking does two things immediately. Number one, networking makes you better. That's the truth. It makes you better. It doesn't matter how good you are. The moment you link up with somebody, that person adds value to you. It makes you better. That's why he said one can chase a thousand, but two will not chase two thousand. Two will chase ten thousand. Now, networking makes you bigger also. It doesn't just make you better. He said for they will have a reward for their labor. And you know, the Bible is full of people who through association, through network, made their lives better. God didn't call Lot. Some people are waiting for God to call them. If God doesn't call you, go and look for somebody that God has called and team up with the person. You know, you, if you are not blessed, look for a blessed man and link up with a blessed man. When you find a blessed man and stand by the blessed man, something will naturally happen. Lot was not called. Lot didn't get a promise. Lot was not assigned anything. Lot didn't hear any God's voice speaking to him. All Lot did was that Lot had a man called Abraham who was blessed by God. He stood with Abraham and when Abraham was collecting the loot, he got a portion. No wonder his name is Lot. That's Abraham. What about Joseph? You read the story of Joseph very well. Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a good background. Joseph was highly favored. Joseph had a father who gave him a coat of many colors. He had a great dream for greatness. But you know what? It was networking that moved him from just a dreamer to a reality. It was networking. Not just network, but the right network. Because initially he knew his father. His father gave him a coat of many colors. He knew his brothers. His brother sent him to the pit. He knew Potiphar and Potiphar's wife. Potiphar and Potiphar's wife sent him to prison. But you know what? It was in prison that he found some people who sent him to the palace. And in the palace, he met somebody who made him a prime minister. I don't know who I'm talking about. But here today, at this Ignite conference, God is setting you up with certain people that will take you to the place that you are supposed to be. So networking is important. The power of great networks. I was telling you about the church that I belong to and I'm a proud member of the redeemed Christian church of God. I have never known any other church and I don't want to know any other church. Honestly speaking, I don't know what people look for in places, but I got what I want here. That's why I'm going to stay here. This is the only organization that has presence in more countries than even Nigeria. As much as I know. Go and find out. It's not everywhere Nigeria has embassies. So I stayed here. By this network, I can stand here today and I can have at least one person in 180 nations I can talk to. I am influential by the grace of God then. Praise God. I don't need to go to America for my life to be amended. I don't need to go to UK so that I can become okay. I don't need to go to Germany to jam my blessing. And it's not China that will make me shine. What will make me what I should be? It's embedded in the place that God has set me up in. <laughs> Beloved of God, Ecclesiastes tells us that one, two are better than one. The question he didn't say is, what about ten? What about hundred? What about a thousand? What about ten thousand? If two are better than one, then ten thousand must definitely overshadow one with so much. Success in life is determined by five things according to Luke chapter 5. If you read the story of Peter, I know many of us like Peter. Success in life can be determined by five things. Number one is what we do, the purpose of life. Number two is how we do it, the timing. Number three is when we do it, the location. Number four is where we do it. I mean, where we do it, the location. When we do it, the timing. Number five is who we do it with and for people. People matter. And that's why I think that that fifth point, people, the most important, in my view, people are our greatest resources. People make things happen. How we deal with people, we determine the things that will come to us. And you need to follow the scripture to understand that. Listen, the Bible says give. 
and it shall be given unto you. And I'm not here to collect money because the moment we hear money, they think he's giving. But it's not just about give money. I mean, giving is not just about money. There's a lot. You can give a smile. You can give encouragement. You can give people a happy face. You can give people, you can defy people. There's so many things you can give. There's so many things you can give. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Shall, not God, shall, shall. So if you have slapped all the men, who will give you? And sometimes people wonder why they don't get. Bad relationship is a bad investment. And it will bring bad returns. That's why networking is critical. Networking is a great tool in determining how far we go and how much we achieve. Research has it that those who are good with networking are three times more influential than those who are not good with networking. Networking determines how influential you can be. Networking determines the access that you have to life. Networking is what determines the information that you can get. And some people, for lack of information, have killed themselves. Because where there's no information, there will be deformation. Where there's no knowledge, there will be ignorance. Where there's ignorance, there will be darkness. Networking is building and nurturing long-term, mutually beneficial relationship with the people that you meet. In Genesis 2 verse 7, Genesis 2 7, God made man. But in verse 18, God said, it is not good for man to be alone. Why is it not good for man to be alone? Because number one, when you are alone, you are limited in capacity and productivity. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 30. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 30. The Bible says there, it said, how can one chase a thousand and two chase ten thousand? When you are alone, you are limited. You are limited. I don't know how much time I'll have. So let me say it here. Many of us young people will always say things like, I don't have money. I can't start a business. I am living poor. And then many of us have become welfare packages instead of being the ones that are giving people welfare. What happened to us starting businesses together? What happened to small scale businesses that are partnership? Why must you go alone? Sometimes you don't understand that number two, being alone increases the burden of work. Being alone can increase the body on work. That's why he said, I will make a woman that will help him. Even though, unfortunately, allow me to digress, some people think that marriage is just for one thing. You don't understand that the initial purpose of marriage is to make a woman that will help you. Unfortunately, there are those who are married, but they don't have women that will help them because they have not allowed the women to help them. They are very, very unwise, or rather they have become so wise, they have become so foolish, that the one God sent to help them is the one they are slapping. Why can you be slapping your help? And then you come to church and say, Oh God, help me. Lord, I need help. Your prayer was answered, but you didn't recognize that the prayer was answered in the woman that was sent to help you. And since you denied yourself the help, God says, I've already helped you. What else do you want me to do? Don't worry. I know some older people will say, that's a small boy talking. Don't worry yourself. When the time comes, we know. Number three, being alone makes you open to attack. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 10. Ecclesiastes 4 10. The Bible says, if they fall. Hmm. He said, one can help the other. Then he said, when he falls. Do you know the meaning of if and the meaning of when? The first one says, if. If means it is a probability. It may not happen. But do you know what he said? He said, when. When means it's a certainty. Anyone that walks alone falls into danger because lone rangers are prone to danger. So if we are willing to own the future, because let me say something about the future. The future is full of possibilities. There's so much that's going to happen. I was talking to some young people the other day. I say, some people are praying, oh God, give me money to go to vacation in the U.S. Somebody is already thinking of how you can take people to the moon for vacation. I mean, they're already building a system now. He said, people want to come and say, let's go to the moon for vacation. And I heard my father in the Lord, the general of Asia, say a long time ago that one day we will have ministers' conference on the moon. How many of us heard that? I heard it several years ago. And immediately in that place, I was not even a pastor. I said to myself, I will be among the first set. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be among the first set. See, the way you are saying it, you don't even believe it. 
Praise God. Praise God. If we are willing to own the future, then we must be able to build the right network. My, my, my mentor, John Maxwell, said, one is too small in number to achieve greatness. So how do we do that? And I'll run that through in the time that I have. Number one, if you are going to build networks that will help you increase your net worth, you've got to put people first in whatever we do. See, see, networking is not about getting a business. It's not about getting a job. It's not about making the contact. I've seen people who have gotten to somebody, and I'm sure that people like Pastor Eman and the rest of us who are here, you will agree with me that there are people that have come to you and they just wanted, the moment you gave them what they wanted, they closed the chapter on you. That's not what it's about. It's about putting people first. Whether you are going to politics, you are going to business, whatever it is, put people first because people make things happen. Be like Jesus. He left his throne because of people. People are important. That's what we need. The greatest resource of life is people. Anyone who has no friends has no future. Anyone who has no friends, is, he can never have a fortune. To be without friends is the highest form of poverty. By the way, my father and the Lord said that, Pastor Peter Mekena. Let me give the credit where it's due. People first. People first. So you must like people. Help me turn to your neighbor. Tell him like people. Like. Tell him like people. Like. And then turn again and tell him, tell him, be like able. See, you must like people. Listen to me. You don't need to be like people to reach them, but you must like them to reach them. Like people. Like people. Like them not because they, they are executive director or not because they are president. No, just like people because they are people. Listen, young people, we may, others we have made mistakes, but let me tell you this. This is my belief. This is where I stand on. There is nobody on the face of the earth who is less privileged. That's where I stand. Nobody is less privileged. So that language, less privileged, we need to stop. Because if you look at the real person, I may not have a leg, but that's not me. I may not have an arm, but that's not me. I am the man that is on the inside. Stop, please stop. Stop rating me based on my packaging. The package and the packaging are two different things. If you take the packaging, you will miss the package. Even if the packaging is dented, the package is more important. So look for the package, not the packaging. That's why I always advise people, if you are going to get married, please don't marry the container, marry the content. Oh yes. That's, that's, see, see, that's the container. The container is figurated. But when somebody like you hits the container a little bit, the container that was figurated can become like this. So if you marry the container, you are likely to want to divorce the container because the content has not changed. So you've got to look at the content, not the container. Put people first. All our politicians put the people first. All our business will build the people first. If you put people first, you will not cheat them. I, I submit that the greatest reason for sin is selfishness. Thou shalt not take thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not take thy neighbor's good. Everything about thy neighbor is thy neighbor's own. When you are selfish, you want what belongs to others. You want it for yourself. So you take thy neighbor's position, you push him out. You skim him out, skim him out of the place, and then you skin him and put him out of the place, and you take his position. You take his wife, you become like a, I mean, David. You take his wife, you kill him, you marry the wife, you want to take his children, you forget that there's a God who can take the child from you and make sure that you don't have that child. Put people first. Please let me tell you never put people first. And I said, you've got to like people. I also say, you've got to be a likable person. If there's one thing I'm learning how to do now, and I'm still working on it, is how to decorate my face with a smile. Because you see, the best gift you can give your face is a smile. People have a way of liking people who like them. Number two, for add value to people. Add value to people. You need, let's be like Jesus. Wherever Jesus went, he made a difference in the life of those whom he met. One of the things that we say in my little club, my tribe, is that we are mad people. Why are we mad? We are mad because we are making a difference. 
You are a salt and a light. Wherever you go, you must turn that place around. If you get to a place and the place is not, is, I mean, and the place is in darkness, be a light. That's a Joseph for you. When Joseph got to the prison, he didn't remember he was a prisoner. He looked at the prisoners and said, guys, any problem in the house? I am a child of God. I carry the knowledge of God. I can solve any problem. Bring the problem here. And this one said, I'm a baker. This is my problem. He solved it. The other one came and said, I'm a butler. This is my problem. He solved it. He was so used to solving problems that when he got to the palace, they had to know that this man has a problem to solve. When they are looking for people to solve problems, are they looking for you? Many times when they are looking for people that have problems, they are looking for young people rather than looking for them to solve problems. That thing must change. We've got to change the narrative. We are not of them that bring problems to the church. We are not of them that bring problems to the nation. We are of them that solve the problem of this nation. We are going to take responsibility and make Nigeria what Nigeria will be. I am not an Andrew who is going to run out. I refuse to run out. I am going to stay here and make a difference in this my world. Young people shape nations. These same young people that I'm seeing here, the same young people I see in Abuja, I see in Port Harcourt, I see in, in Ibadan, I see in Lagos, the same young people in Kano, in Kaduna, in Maiduguri, the same young people are going to shape Nigeria and making the nation that the world will desire. Can I get an amen in the house? Yeah. Add value to people. Number three, be open-minded. Be open-minded. If you are going to own the future, you must be open-minded. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that these days we have less and less intermarriages because we have closed our minds. I happen to be a product of intermarriage. My father happens to be from the western part of Nigeria. My mother happens to be from the eastern part of Nigeria, not very far from here. I spent a lot of my life in the north. I spent about 20 years of my life actually living in the north. That's why sometimes I say, I don't know how people want it, but you will just run through life. And it was so much fun. So much fun. There's so much variety. But here now we are. We have closed our mind and that's why we are not gaining the blessing of God. Even in the church, there are Greeks and there are Jews and God is against it. Stop being... I have not said what I want to say, but I stopped myself because I immediately realized that I'm in worry. And I'm not sure there's a helicopter here that can carry me to Lagos. I still want to go to Lagos. <laughs> see, see, stop. Let's stop being proud of something that came out of a problem that God had with man. Languages. Where did tribe come from? Tribe came from the singular fact that some people wanted to go against the purpose of God and God said, no, you can't go against my purpose. So God scattered them. So it was languages that scattered them. Sir, we've got to. That's why when God saved us, he gave us a language to bring us back because language is important. So you can speak any language you like, but there's a language that connects me and you. Marima Santari Ago Saka. Open your mind. There's no black man anywhere. There's no white man anywhere. We are just human beings. That's all. Oh, I have a white friend. Shut up. You don't have a white friend. You have a friend. Have you met my evil friend? Shut up. You don't have an evil friend. You have a friend. A friend is a friend. It doesn't matter the language the person is. Stop looking at people like that. Open your mind. Because when you don't open your mind, you close, you close yourself to opportunity. The future will be full of so many things. There are things that will happen in the future that many people will not like. Honestly speaking. You know, I tell some people that even some of us who are born again, if you get to heaven, honestly speaking, some people will not want to enter. How can you enter when you have never seen gold in your life? Then you now see gold on the floor. Ah, God, you are canal. Oh, God, you are canal. How can you have gold here? He said, the gates are made of pearl. You have never seen pearl in your life. And then you see gates made of pearl. He said, ah, God, this thing is worldly. Hello, wake up. You are in heaven. Be open-minded. The future is full of possibilities. Be open-minded. There are things that will happen. A time will come when you don't need to have a car. You just call a car. Driverless cars are coming. Hello, somebody. Driverless cars are coming. Open your mind. Only God knows what will happen. Today, you can use a small cell phone to talk to your somebody. In those days, you have to queue up in a place before you can talk. You could queue up for like three days before you can get to talk to somebody. Right now, you can talk to anybody anywhere. Why are we having this function here and people are watching everywhere? Because technology came on board. Be open-minded. Help me tell you, anybody. Be open-minded. Open Number four, develop your communication, your communication skills. 
talk, they say it's cheap, but I don't agree. Talk is not cheap. Because you see, the words you speak can either make you or mar you. Talk is not cheap. Everybody respects you until you open your mouth. The moment you open your mouth and say something, then they put you in your box. So you've got to learn how to speak. You've got to understand the tonality, the body language of speaking. You've got to understand how you carry it and how you do that. I won't have time to talk about that because that's very technical. Number five, always seek a win-win situation. You want to network, seek a win-win situation. Win-win situation. You see, stop fighting the war to win. I mean, the battle to win, then you lose the war. I'm fighting for my right. What about your left? It will soon go. They will take your left while you are still fighting. Well, seek a win-win situation. Recently, we had a very fantastic political game in Nigeria where some very young minds, I don't want to mention their name, but one of them was our speaker this morning. Some young minds came on board and said, I want to be president. Of course, they didn't get presidency, but they were not losers. They didn't lose because, you know what? They taught us courage. They showed us courage. They showed us that you can dare it. You can try it. They showed us courage. They showed us young people can rise up and do something. They showed us that. Now, what I'm thinking is that if we have a win-win situation in Nigeria, why don't you bring those young people into the government and use their skill? Must I be a member of your party to add value to this nation? Must I be a member of your party for me to be in your cabinet? Let's look for a win-win situation. Let's look for it. If you are doing something, don't look for how others will lose. Look for how others will also win. Networking is about all of us getting the best of life. When people come around you, you do two things. It's either you make them better or you help them to become bitter. Number six, get socially active. Get socially active. I see a major difference in the life of Jesus Christ and John the Baptist. I don't know if you have read that before, but I see a major difference in the two lives. When John the Baptist came in Luke chapter 1 verse 18, Luke chapter 1 verse 18, the Bible says, and the child grew and walked strong in spirit, and then he went to the wilderness. No wonder they cut off his head. <laughs> but look at Jesus. The Bible says concerning Jesus in Luke chapter 2 uh, verse 40, Luke 2 40, he said, and the child grew and walked strong in stature and grew in favor with God and in favor with man. Listen, Jesus Christ grew in stature physically, so if you go to the gym, it's not a sin. Jesus Christ didn't only grow in stature, Jesus Christ also grew in wisdom, so mentally he was alert. He was alert. And then he had favor with God, so spiritually he was strong. And then he had favor with man, socially he was strong. The young, this guy, he knew how to go to parties and sit down there. They allowed everybody could drink, but he used to tell them that I like you, but I'm not like you. <laughs> Can I throw a challenge to us here? Check your phone. All of you who are born again, check your phone. Your phone is full of brother, pastor, sister. Evangelist, apostle, you are part of those who are reducing the kingdom of God because all your contacts are born again. The others who are not born again are not your contacts, so you cannot reach them. Unfortunately, because you cannot reach them, God cannot reach them. It's time that we raise some Jacobs who can do business with Laban and come out and change Laban. When Laban will stand up and Laban will say, I have come to discover that God has blessed me because you are there. You will not go to the office and be crying in the office or come to the church and say, Pastor, I lost my job. They sacked me. When they sack you, you will stand there and say, excuse me, I didn't miss nothing. You missed something. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. If I come, I carry the blessing. If you reject my blessing, if you say no to me, I have an answer to no, no means next option. Get social. When it comes to social media, okay, I know many of us are there. The question I want to leave you because I'm closing now. Number one question is, why are you there? Why are you on social media? It's a question you need to answer. Are you there because everybody is there? If you follow the crowd, you will not get the crown. Number two, what do you do there? What do you do when you're on social circles, when you're in social media? What do you do? When you get there, some people do the only thing they do. And then you wake up in the morning and say, Who told you we are interested in seeing your face? Number three, when are you there? 
Some people have no culture of timing. So you are on social media anytime and every time. When are you going to do the things that you are supposed to put on social media? You see, I don't care what you drive. I care what drives you. I say to young people, Lord, Mercedes Benz is a car that was produced by a man called Carl Benz. His daughter's name is Mercedes. So Mercedes Benz is somebody's daughter. You are riding Mercedes Benz. You are riding somebody's daughter. Who will ride your daughter? I wear YSL. YSL, Hives and Lauren is somebody's name. When are we going to see young people? Give me those names in worry that can make sense. When are we going to see your perfume in your name? Are you going to see those, those designs in your name? Well, let's stop this. He said, I'm dancing shaku shaku. Fine. There's nothing wrong with dancing shaku shaku, but somebody designed it. When are you going to design your own dance step? Who is there with you? Where do you intend to go to there? And my last point, which I'm closing on, is this. If you want to network, Focus on creating an experience that people will not forget. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Everybody falls at the feet of their feeling. That's why Jesus Christ will go anywhere and you create an experience they won't forget. There was a woman by the well side. He only spent a moment with her. And the woman went to town and told the entire world, everybody, come and hear a man that told me all my life story in one moment. He created an experience that was unforgettable. Thank you very much for listening. I do hope that I was able to create an unforgettable experience in this place. I pray for every one of us that the Almighty God will link us up in the right direction with the right kind of people that will take us to the place that God has arranged for us. I see you in the palace. God bless you.